I was brought up really around senior people. When they tell you they want to do something, I just have to fall apart. Mommy said, I want to testify. And so I'm, I'm going to do this. There, there are three people who want to testify. And I'm going to ask you really please to keep it to because it's already late. We, I, I should be having the woman of God on. So Samantha, uh, uh, was it you want to testify? Um, Ellis, um, Brother Ellis, would you come? And mom, all three, only these three. No, no. I like her, you know, she's like, come, 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 come. Bless God. Tell them what God did. Hi. Um, so, um, some of you have been here for a while. You're, you'll recognize me as the miserable peacekeeper. <laughs> but... But lately, I've, I've been working in the children's ministry. All right. So, 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 so God blessed me with three things. A big mouth, a sense of humor, and prostate cancer. So um, how the story started was um, for my 50th birthday, I just decided I was going to do a health check. I had no symptoms, no, nothing to worry about. I was more worried about diabetes and cholesterol than anything else. So I went to the doctors, and um, he's punching in all these different things, and he said, should we do the PSA, which is um, what you need for prostate cancer? I am denied, and I said, yeah, why not? Go ahead and do it. And um, so we did it, and it takes two weeks. On the, the last day of the two weeks, I got a text message from... Um, Guy's Hospital Oncology Department and it said your appointment's been booked for uh, 27th of March I think it was but I didn't know what it was I didn't even know what oncology was looked up oncology and it's the study treatment prevention of cancer but I hadn't heard from the surgery so eventually I heard from the surgery and they said um, so you've done your PSA count and it's come back high um, so automatically we, we arrange an appointment for you to, to go and see a consultant. So the threshold is 3.5. If it's above 3.5, they create a, an appointment for you. So mine was 6.5. So, um, so, went, to, so, so, so went, to, uh, went to the hospital and they did a MRI scan, ultrasound, and a biopsy. After all of that, my PSA came at 11.5. At around the 30 mark, your prostate begins to deteriorate, split, and that's when cancer spreads around your body. As far as cancer is concerned, the prostate cancer is, if you for want of a better word, it's the best cancer you can get because it's contained. So, um, so they said to me, you've got two choices. You can either have the radical surgery and have it removed, or you can have uh, radiotherapy and um, hormone treatment. Effectively, the radiotherapy and the hormone treatment turns you into a girl. Um, you lose definition, you grow breast tissue, all sorts of things happen. Yeah, but the main thing is, is that if it doesn't work, you might not be able to have the prostate removed. So you're effectively signing your own death warrant if you go down that route. So on the uh, 5th of July, I had the operation. And the thing about the operation is the prostate is, is surrounded by uh, a bunch of two sets of nerves. And those nerves control the hydraulics um, that you need <laughs> to, to function. As, and um, so, so, so basically, depending on how the operation is, they'll either save two of them, one of them, or none of them. So the doctor, oh, I've missed that a bit, sorry. So I tried, to, I tried to delay the operation because I was going to miss my daughter's graduation. And um, he said, no, it's best to do this as soon as possible. So um, I decided to drown my sorrows as you do, went off to the McDonald's. And, 
and I bought a, I bought a paper I bought a newspaper along the way. I just picked it up. I didn't didn't know what what, it, what was on it. Just 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 bought this newspaper. When I got into McDonald's and I opened up this newspaper, um, it said that week they were doing um, a, a health series on different different professionals. So on the Monday was breast cancer, and unbeknown to me, I didn't see the headline. That Tuesday was prostate cancer, and they had on there the top 20 consultants in the country. Opened it up, and my consultant was there. So, and I and I, and I carry that I carry that newspaper around with me. So I, I said to God, okay, if you do your bit, I'll do my bit. So we had the operation, and the consultant came back to me and he said, look, your, your prostate was a bit bashed up, but we managed to save both of the nerves. Wow. So, so I came out of hospital um, the day after, 100% incontinent and 100% in, impotent. I've got no problem with saying that. That's, that's just how it is. And um, so the recuperation is long and it's, and, and, and it's hard. In the meantime, I started a blog. And that blog, um, Guy's Hospital have turned around and said, you know, this, this blog is not only honest and refreshing and funny, we'd like to use it for new patients. So any new patient now, they'll get to, to see my blog. So, um, Going forward now, um, so my bit was to talk to men because this is something we don't talk about, yeah? Um, and it's not just black men, white men, we just don't talk about it. So, so moving forward, um, I joined um, Prostate Cancer UK and I've become a spokesperson for them. Oh, wow. And I had, my first, I had my first talk on Monday so, so that went well. Regarding the incontinence, that's down to about 10, 20%, and the impotence is down to about 70%, but it'll get there, and through all of that, I've just got to give thanks that not only am I still here, but I know that, I know that it's in his hands and it's not a problem. Amen. Now, the, the reason why I wanted to be a spokesperson for this is because the, the statistics are, are horrific. Depending on, what, depending on what you read, it's one in 20 or one in eight white men, and it's one in three black men. And we just don't talk about it, we ignore it, we pretend it doesn't happen. And I just want to say today that, you know, women, you've got to do your part as well because men won't, men won't go to the doctors. I had no symptoms, no symptoms whatsoever. If you get in front of this, it's a lot easier. Yeah? It's if when you leave it, if you wait for the symptoms, you've actually got more of a problem. So women, encouraging men to just go and get tested. And men, just get tested. And all I can say is I'm going to continue to be a big mouth for this. I can, I'm going to continue to be the worst enemy for prostate cancer. Amen. And just believe in God all the way because he has taken me through this and he will take me through this and that's that's all i can do hallelujah somebody give god praise uh, thank you very much let, let me say this real quickly um th there are some men who i know privately have gone through what you've gone through and god has speedily healed them of all the side effects stretch your hands right now because i want god to do the same for him because not only will you be a spokesman but you'll be a testimony a complete testimony you know when we heard um he was not quiet about it he sent out the information and all the brothers we were text we were whatsapped and told pray for him and we all began to pray for him and we thank God because it could have been another way, but God has spared his life. Amen. God puts us through something. And whenever time I read the word of God, whenever God wants to raise a deliverer, he wants to raise a prophet, he makes the prophet go through. It's, it's really true. He said, uh, he said, before you prophesy, Isaiah, I'm going to let you lay on your side before you prophesy 
Hosea, I'm going to make you experience a wife that will go and sell herself to everybody. Because I'm only doing this so that you will understand what I am going through. You cannot prophesy, you cannot talk to people based upon something you read. It's got to be something you experience. And as the Lord has given you favor to be a mouthpiece, not only will you be a mouthpiece, but when you speak, it will be speaking healing and deliverance and breakthrough to people. So Father, we thank you for him. We thank you for the testimony tonight. We thank you for the healing and the miracle that has taken place. And the Lord, the finished work that you're going to do in his body. We thank you right now that you're going to speed up the process. And Lord, he will be not only a, spoke, a spokesperson, but he will be one that will speak. And even the doctors and all the people, the surgeons will say, my, this must be a miracle. For this thing has moved and healing has taken place as quicker than they expected. We thank you and we give the glory for his life, Lord. Lord. We thank you for how he served in this house and your God that never forgets when someone gives their time to the house of God. Repay him back for all the good that he done. Lord bless him Lord I pray. Increase him and his family in Jesus name. Amen. We love you sir. Oh come on I want you to praise God for him right now. Hallelujah. Keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Keep standing. Uh, I, 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 the time's gone, so I'm, uh, I'm. <laughs>